All right, what is up guys? It's Josh back with another video. Uh, today I kind of have a special video for you guys. Uh, as soon as these released, I literally came up with the nicest idea for a video. I thought, why force you guys to spend, you know, $30, $40 on some Booga gaming gear when I could just spend it out of my ad revenue uh, and review it regardless on if it is not worth it or if it's worth it i'll give you my honest opinion because i am i'm not being paid to make this video i was never sent these on free this was out of free will i bought this with my own money um so we'll find out if it's worth it or not i did get the mouse right here the i'll show you the box it's just the box i already took them out of the box because i was just making sure that everything was there because you never know i haven't heard of this company five below before so i don't know if they're like completely legit at how their packaging was um, but so far, so good, if I'm being completely honest. Um, so we have the mouse right here. Uh, it has like side buttons and stuff. It's a gaming mouse. Uh, has pretty much standard design for all of the low quality Amazon ones that I've seen too in the past. Uh, we also have the gaming RGB mouse pad. From what I've seen already, it isn't completely RGB. I'll get to that uh, later in the video. And then we have the keyboard, which again has a similar design to... Uh, all the other low quality ones you can get on Amazon, but their price point, considering it's only ten dollars US, uh, isn't that expensive. It's not inexpensive either because you know I've seen other keyboards on Amazon that are like the same price. I've seen a sixty percent keyboard that was about twenty dollars. Uh, so I'm not sure if it'd be worth it to spend the extra, you know, ten dollars and get maybe a higher quality keyboard because i know that they mass produce them on amazon they're a lot cheaper for manufacturing uh but enough of me talking i'm gonna get to uh, actually reviewing these but quickly if you guys enjoyed the video i did spend my own money on this uh so make sure to drop a like subscribe comment give me some feedback down below and make sure to turn on notifications so you never miss out on a new video and i will also be including a test in game for fortnite uh, so let's get right into it all right, guys, so the first thing I will be reviewing, normally I'd say let's do the cheapest thing first, uh, the smallest thing, uh, but you know, they're all the same price point. So I'm going to start with the mouse pad just because it's kind of like a, I don't know, it's it's a make or break, I guess. You can either have a really bad mouse pad or a really good one. And honestly, this is it out of the box right here. Fairly large. Uh, I will compare it to my other mouse pad that I have currently, a Rockat. But, you know, it's it's pretty, it's a decent size. I will have a hand cam after me playing Fortnite so you can get a general sense of it. But, you know, it is it is fairly large. I will get the measurements. I'll put them up on the screen right now. Uh, so it's fairly large. I think they call it an extra large extended mouse pad RGB. You can see the LEDs around the edges right there. It does come with a, a micro USB cable that plugs into your PC that gives it RGB. So I will quickly plug it in. Uh, if I know how to plug it in correctly. So uh, there are a bunch of different RGB modes. It does, when I say RGB, uh, I mean, it's kind of cycles between the colors like this. This is just the standard uh, color cycle mode. In what I thought, I got a general impression that it would be like a, like a circular RGB motion. I'll hold it up so you guys can see it's on red right now. I'll cycle through all them right now here. So there is a button. Uh, on the mouse pad itself, I'll show you right here. Uh, the wire's kind of cucking me, but you know, there's a little panel right here, standard for all RGB mouse pads. Uh, there's a cycle button that you can press to change the colors. So it's like this fast RGB cycle thing. I think that was the kind of thing that they were advertising. There isn't really, there's a slow-ish color changing one. There's a bunch of solid color ones that you can change between the colors. Uh, I want to say there's about maybe 10. I'll count it and put it in the description or something like that, maybe on the screen of actually how many modes there are. But um, yeah, for lighting, you know, it's pretty solid. The stitching around the edges is also really solid. I've seen other mouse pads that aren't really stitched as well, but this one's so far so good. The rubber backing uh, could be a lot better. Uh, because I am moving it right now. My headset just fell off the, my desk. Um, I am moving it right now. It's kind of sliding pretty easily. So um, it's not too bad. Could be a lot better, but it could be a lot worse uh, for $10 mouse pads. So uh, the surface itself seems to be some sort of blend of like a nice polyester mix, kind of standard for all your um, smooth glide mouse pads. 
Uh, I will show you my other mouse pad right here. Uh, I will... Yeah, it's pretty comparable in size. Uh, my Rocket is a bit bigger, slightly. Uh, this is my Rocket right here. It's just a soft, uh, standard one. Isn't stitched on the edges, so it is a bit of an upgrade. I'm not gonna lie. I might use this as my main mouse pad for now. I do have a surprise for that in the future. I do have a custom Joshi TV one coming in the mail right now. And I may or may not promote it. I, I probably will um but yeah i have a surprise for that so stay tuned for that video i also will be reviewing uh gk61 over the next week or two uh hk gaming i actually reached out to them asked them if i can make a review video uh so that's coming in the mail i think it's actually supposed to come today uh, so expect the video next week this video should be going up on friday the 6th yeah friday the 6th um so expect by the way also my 10k montage is tomorrow so get hyped but yeah Mouse pad, solid build. Um, I'll give it an 7 or an 8 out of 10, kind of taking away from the fact that it doesn't have the cycling RGB around like a normal RGB mouse pad does. I don't think it would be that expensive to add that. You know, I'd pay the extra $5 uh, for a cool effect like that or something like that. Uh, again, the surface, I'd give that about a 9 out of 10. Uh, could be a lot or it couldn't be a lot better, but, you know, just a bit better. And then most of my points are being subtracted from the actual uh, non-slip backing because it could be a lot better. But, you know, let's move on to the next thing, which is going to be the gaming mouse. All right, guys, so the next thing we're going to be checking out is the gaming mouse. Uh, it is this. I'm going to just show you like that right there. Um, you know, pretty solid. has a metal bottom right here. It does have a decent feel the um i don't know what to call this maybe the the paddles the buttons the click paddles or something like that uh do seem a bit flimsy but you know you gotta expect that if it's a ten dollar mouse it does make a bit of a squeaking noise the scroll wheel does i know it does light up pretty nicely because i plugged it in last night to check it out um the glides on it don't seem too bad um yeah, comparing it to my Model Low, it definitely doesn't glide as nicely. There is, there seems to be a bit of friction between the mouse pad and the mouse. Uh, probably just some default glides that they have on it, not too good. The side buttons do seem a bit stiff. They might break in with a bit of use. And then the DPI shift buttons. Like it makes it makes noise just moving it, so you guys can already kind of get an understanding of the fact that this mouse isn't really high quality at all. I am gonna plug it in and show you the RGB effects, so I'll see you guys when I do that. All right, guys, so I do have it plugged in now. Um, I don't know why it's not showing. Yeah, the DPI on these things are actually, like, crazy high. I'm going to have to change that. Um, but, yeah, there are two DPI buttons on this mouse. Uh, there's a DPI up and a DPI down. I'll put the default levels on the screen because I know they're pretty high. Like, I feel like the lowest DPI level, I think, is 1,200, which is crazy high for a default uh, mouse level. Because I know the Model O comes standard with, I believe, 400, 800, uh, 1,200 being the second highest. Another one, I personally play with 800 DPI. I feel it's right for me with my current sense. I'll have to tweak it a bit uh, so I don't seem like I'm playing like an absolute bot on Fortnite when I do the actual Fortnite test. Uh, but for the RGB effects, it just seems to have a standard cycle. Um, but, you know, scroll wheel does feel a bit loose. Again, the clicks don't feel that nice. Like, just comparing it to my Model O real quick. That's a click on my Model O. And then, this is a click on my, on the Booga mouse. So, in my opinion, it could be a lot better. The lighting is meh. Uh, I'll give the mouse a 6 out of 10, kind of for the, the fact that the buttons are a bit loose-ish. Like, I can literally wobble it without actually clicking it down which is kind of concerning uh the rgb effects or whatever 
The DPI buttons are loose. It doesn't seem like, I mean, it is a $10 mouse, so say what you want about it, but it doesn't really seem to be that, you know, solid of a mouse. I definitely just pay the extra $20, $30. Get a Model O, man. Like, don't be lazy. I know they call it affordable, but it's not really like the mouse is the most expensive part of a gaming setup. Uh, so yeah, I'd give this a six out of 10 because of the, the stability, the stability, stability, what am I saying? The stability of the mouse buttons and the DPI wheel, all that good stuff. Uh, let's move on to the next one, which is going to be the keyboard. All right, guys. So the last one that we're going to be checking out before we hop into the actual Fortnite review is going to be the keyboard. Uh, it obviously is a membrane keyboard when you get to using uh, you know, things like this. It isn't going to be an expensive, you know, linear switch like a Cherry MX or a Gator on, something like that. It obviously is going to be a membrane board. Um, but just testing it out right now, it seems pretty solid of a membrane keyboard. Uh, not much wobble in the keycaps, which is always nice to see. Um, it is a standard layout, obviously. Uh, I will start to unwrap the cable as I talk. So I can plug it in and show you the RGB effects. I did plug it in yesterday. It seemed pretty standard in terms of uh, all the different options for RGB. I believe there is a way to cycle it, but I'm not too sure. But, you know, the build of the keyboard itself, it's just the standard plastic shell, uh, cheap Amazon keyboard that you'd kind of find on, uh, you know, like I just said, Amazon for a really low price point like $20. I've seen some of these keyboards running you about $20, $30. Um, but it does seem, a, it seems pretty solid for a nice plastic keyboard. Doesn't have too much, it has a bit of flex to it. I don't want to break it in half. Um, but you know, I'm going to plug it in now and I'll get to the RGB effects. All right guys, so I do have it plugged in now. Uh, I'll show you it real quick. This is it. It's just a standard uh, RGB because it goes from green to blue on this side it's a little spectrum um but you know the keyboard itself it's pretty solid one thing i am noticing already is when you press a key down to me it seems like almost like a slow bounce back but um yeah it seems like it, it's a bit slow to go down and come back up uh which should be a bit of a massive piece of fortnite you know uh, if you're using this keyboard for any game really if you're pressing keys you know you're gonna want a good responsive keyboard uh but what i'm going to do is i'm going to there is adjustable adjustable brightness levels i just noticed that right now uh it's adjustable with page up and page down along with uh, FN. I don't think there's a way to cycle the modes. There's just a way to turn it off. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get to the actual part. Uh, I'm gonna give this maybe a six out of 10 considering it's a membrane keyboard. Uh, the switches don't really bounce back, bounce back nicely. It is pretty solid though, so I'll give it that. And it seems like maybe a good option if you're only trying to spend, you know, $30, $40 on your initial three components of a gaming setup, which is obviously going to be your mouse pad, your mouse, and your keyboard. Uh, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to load up Fortnite. I am going to uh, record on my PC and also have an angle of the hand cam that I kind of use for my POV videos so you guys can kind of see uh, how it's working out. So I'll see you guys then. Alright guys, so uh, I have been cranking for a bit already, uh, just to get a feel of the keyboard and mouse. But if I'm being completely honest, it's not even bad, like I can do almost what I normally do on keyboard and mouse. Like it's, it's not like the switches are like unresponsive half the time. Like they are, it's, it's a good keyboard and mouse, honestly, like for in-game. Like, I've been playing with it for like two minutes now just to get a general feel of it. Like, it's not like I'm used to the keyboard already. Like, I'm starting to get used to it, but at the same time, like, it's not a bad keyboard for $10, if I'm being completely honest. I kind of would not recommend getting it because, I mean, there's other keyboards like a 60% RK61 or even a GK61 that you could get for, you know... $60 or whatever, which again, I will be reviewing about next week. So if you 
are kind of indecisive. You don't know what you want to get in terms of uh, gaming keyboard if you're looking over your options. I would wait till that video comes out before you make any decisions, but at the same time, if you do want to get this just for jokes like me, like I got this as a joke, obviously I'm not going to use it as my actual keyboard, um, but at the same time, it's not even a bad option if, uh, you know, you're just starting out gaming, your parents don't really want you to spend a fortune on your setup, this is a good, you know, bundle of three things that you could get uh, just for 30 or $40 at a really low price point. Um, but again, obviously, the mouse and the keyboard aren't the best. I would say the keyboard is a lot better than the mouse, comparing it uh, in performance to other things, because the mouse, uh, the side buttons and stuff seem a bit stiff and hard to press and kind of inconvenient uh, in terms of those kinds of things. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much that. I mean, I've been free building for about five minutes now. Not too bad. By the way, I do have an upcoming video. If you guys want, if we can hit 200 likes on this video, I will win a game of solos using only the Booga keyboard, mouse, and mouse pad. Uh, so using only Booga gaming gear, <laughs> I'll be uh, winning a game of Fortnite. Only if we get 200 likes on this video. Uh, so stay tuned for that. If we have hit 200 likes, this will be coming out, or the keyboard video winning a game will be coming out soon. But yeah, overall, if I'm ranking it out of, uh, you know, 10 stars for an overall performance, I give it, honestly, a 8, if I'm being completely honest. I know that, um, what's it called, the keyboard and mouse aren't the best, especially the mouse, but I would definitely rank it mouse pad. I would definitely, if you have $10 to spend, just pick up the mouse pad. It's a really good deal. I'm probably going to be using it as my main mouse pad from here on out until I get uh, my Joshi TV one, which is getting custom shipped to me. Uh, but yeah, and then I definitely recommend the keyboard second. If you have $10 laying around, you want an inexpensive option. Uh, you don't want to spend the extra $20 to get an RK61. You just want to get something like that. But, uh, yeah, and then obviously the mouse is last. Kind of loses points for uh, actual construction of the mouse. I mean, the RGB effects on all of them aren't the greatest either. But, you know, that just comes with the uh, price point. You know, they, they tried to find the cheapest way to add RGB to a product that I thought was almost impossible to release at a price point of $10 without actually profiting right uh but yeah that's pretty much gonna be it for the video guys if you guys did enjoy uh make sure to drop a like uh subscribe comment give me some feedback down below and i will see you guys later peace out